welcome back. Today I want to do a little different type of video. Instead of demonstrating one particular item being printed, I just want to talk about maker botting in general. Um, now that I've had uh, just a few weeks experience with it, I think there's a lot of people out there that are beginners, uh, like me, or maybe you're thinking about getting one and you want to find out more about it and that's why you're watching these videos. I know there's a number of people out there that are very experienced, but they're living in a whole different world as far as how they're operating with the software and what they're doing in modifying these machines because they're very customizable and there's a lot that you can do. But I want to just throw out a few things that I've learned that uh, really almost should be part of the uh, documentation or maybe even the way they sell this machine to you because there are some issues you have to know about to avoid having problems. For example, having problems like this where pieces just fall apart. Let's see if I'll show you. Okay, this is supposed to be uh, all one piece and it's just not. <laughs> so I'll explain that a little bit and tell you what I've learned and maybe help you out when you set up your MakerBot. Okay, the first thing I want to point out is the MakerBot comes, it's an open frame design. The, the front is open and the two sides and the top are all open and exposed to the room that you're in. And that creates some problems. Uh, the, the, the MakerBot has a heated, heated build platform. That's the plate that the objects are printed on. And the extruders themselves are heated. And any kind of draft or breeze or temperature variation causes problems with the way the plastic cools at different rates and you end up with curling and warping and also the separation or delamination uh, of the, the different layers. So what I found is you really have to start blocking off these sides. And I started off by just using whatever I had on hand. Uh, then I moved to some foam core. Uh, and now I'm moving, then I moved to aluminum foil. And now I've moved to some acrylic sheets. And I'll show that to you closer up in a second. I've already built the, uh, the sides, the left and right sides. The front I have here, I've yet to cut it out. Uh, I'm still working out exactly how I was going to attach it because the sides you don't really have to take off very often, but the front all the time because that's how you get the prints out and uh, replace the Kapton tape and wipe it down with acetone and also do your, your uh, leveling, which is something else I want to talk about. The other thing is you have to cover off the top and because the top moves, uh, you can't just have a straight sheet across the top. You have to have a little bit of a structure. So right now you can probably tell I've got some aluminum foil which is wrapped around the top and just leaves a hole in the middle where the, the uh, print head's moving, the extruders are moving. And I pretty much have to take that off and then start my print and then once my print has begun I can see how much area it needs and then I can uh, block it off with the foil. And the foil keeps that hot air just from rising and coming out. It also blocks the air conditioning from coming in and landing right on it. And so I think anyone that's getting a MakerBot once you start doing prints of any size, uh, small things, uh, this is an iPhone stand, small things like that, you can probably do just fine. I, I don't, I haven't had any problems really. But when you start doing taller things with more uh, height off the stage, you're going to start getting delamination and cracking. And I have a number of, I have a number of pieces here. I'll show you. This is part of a box. And Basically, it just fell apart when I took it when I took it off the platform, and you can see here it's still cracking. And this was all supposed to be one solid piece of plastic. And there's actually other reasons why that's happening as well, and I, I will discuss that. And my intention is to show the whole process from turning on the computer to getting your print off when it's done, because there's actually a lot to, a lot to know. And by making some small adjustments in the software, you can really make a big difference in the quality of your print. It's not very pretty, but here's how it is right now. I've got acrylic sides that are cut, and I've created holes to let the screw heads come through. And I've got one on the left side and the right side. And in the front, I just have this sheet here, laying here, and the foil on top. And so that's a work in progress. But I found that it's pretty important. You have to do that to get consistent prints, especially once they get taller. And that's my first small piece of advice. Figure out a way to somehow block off the sides and the top. Uh, I've seen some designs where there's a box that literally covers the whole thing. 
Um, people are building acrylic or Lexan frames that go across the top. I've seen one design that used cloth. Any which way you want to come up with, I think you, it's important to, uh, to enclose the, uh, the MakerBot. Well, the mu material I'm using is this acrylic I, I bought at the local hardware store. This was about $4 a sheet. And so uh, this, what I have here is .093 acrylic. They made thicker stuff. They also have Lexan, which is a little better, probably a little optically clearer. But for my purposes, this is fine right now. And I, I just want to see how it worked out before I spent too much money on, on something when, when I cut it up. So now let me explain for a second about the next thing that I recommend you get. And that's because not every one of these is the same. This is a spool of MakerBot filament. It's 1.75 millimeter ABS. This is their blue ABS. And you'll see in the pack, well, hopefully you can see in the package, it comes with a little package of desiccant in here. And the reason I haven't opened this one up yet is because I wanted to keep it sealed until I was ready to use it. The reason for that is that this plastic will absorb moisture from the air and it'll swell. It'll change in dimension. The dimension's important because the extruder has to know how big the filament is so it knows how much plastic it's putting down. Now, there are defaults that come in, the, in Replicator G. And you can start off with those as I did. And as you start making more advanced prints, you'll, you'll start to find out that you're having problems that can be fixed by having one of these. This is a pair of digital calipers. It's got measurements down to the hundredth of a millimeter, which is what we need here to measure our filament. As I said, the filament's mark is 1.75 millimeter ABS. The default in Replicator G is 1.82 millimeters. That's how it comes when you install it. I've measured my filament everywhere from 1.73 millimeters, uh, which was the yellow, the red was 1.77 millimeters, and the black was 1.80 millimeters, none of which matched the 1.82 millimeters uh, that was the setting default in the software. Once I started measuring the filament, and in case you're not familiar with these, uh, it's got a digital display, and as you separate, I want to get the reflection up there, as you, as you separate the uh, jaws of the caliper, you get the readout. Uh, it's very simple to use. You have to be consistent in the way that you measure the filament uh, because it's round and if you hold it at an angle you get a false reading. So uh, I'd recommend you take a bunch of readings along the length, maybe hold it upside down, right side up, maybe turn the filament around, get an average reading. And, um, and then you can plug those numbers into Replicator G. And that made a big difference in the quality of my prints. Those are my two quick tips for today. Cover the openings in your MakerBot. You may have to cover the whole thing or maybe just the sides or just the sides in the front. Find out what you need for your environment. In my house, I think I pretty much have to enclose the whole thing. Uh, the second thing, get a set of calipers and get in the habit of measuring your filament and enter those settings into SkeenForge. I will go over that in a later video. And that will really help you to make cool and fun things like this Tron kit. I will cover this. Uh, each piece was, each color was built separately on the plate, and then you put it together like a model kit. A lot of fun. And also making more interesting, intricate pieces like this, okay, that really the dimensions are crucial. And if the mating parts are to fit together, everything's got to be spot on. Your calibration's got to be good, and you have to have measured your filament properly. And you have to have, keep it nice and warm inside the build chamber so that you're your parts don't crack and warp. Well, I, I truly hope that that helps someone out there that's new to MakerBotting. If you're frustrated with your print quality, take a look at enclosing the sides and measure your filament. I also want to come back in a future video and talk about leveling the build plate because that's another thing that's just crucial. Although MakerBot does explain that in the manual and gives you a there's a script that runs on the uh, right here on the on the display that helps you to measure that. But they don't really explain how important it is and how delicate the mechanism is and how frequently you have to do it. So that's something I want to cover later and go into detail and show you how to level the build plate. But just when I made my last segment, just at the end, the build finished. So I'll, I'll show you now. It's, a, uh, it's the uh, sixth position iPhone holder that I've gotten from Thingiverse. And I'll show that to you uh, here in a second, the Thingiverse page. And so let's take it off right now and see how it, how it came out. By the way, this tool roll is just propped up to hold up the uh, sheet that I haven't cut out yet. And it's got a, 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 a covering on it that gives this frosty look. Once I peel that off, it'll be clear, just like this one. You can see right through it. 
So let's see what's inside the MakerBot this afternoon. That is a uh, six position iPhone holder. Let's see if it'll pop off the build plate. There we go. And uh, I've used this actually a bunch of times for FaceTime chats and I've given, well I've probably made about six or eight of these and I just hand them out. But uh, it's simple, it's a nice design. Uh, thank you very much for the designer who whose name escapes me at the moment, but I'll uh, I'll put it here down at the bottom of the video. And uh, if you're looking for a nice project to print and you have an iPhone, this is a nice little, it's a quick print too. And it also works with the case that I have or without the case, which is kind of nice. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and uh, come back again. Uh, you can subscribe to the BusyBot channel and learn how to level your build plate. I'm also going to have demonstrations on the software and a lot more tips and tricks on how to run the MakerBot. So thanks again. Have a great day. I couldn't resist. I wanted to show you a little video of the MakerBot in action, especially so you can listen to it. It makes a great sound.